If you can see the screen that says tips and tools for working remotely, please type Y in the chat box. The letter Y. Perfect. Okay. So welcome to Fantastic Five Fridays. I'm just going to jump right into this because the free version of Zoom, which we are using now, gives us a 40 minute um, time, time frame to do this. Um, and obviously everyone is trying to get about their days. So let's just jump, jump right into it. Uh, hello, Siobhan from the chamber. Uh, is everyone cool to just jump right in? Just hit Y in the chat box there. Perfect. Okay, so um, part of Fantastic Five Fridays, we are officially the first ones. Uh, I am Sheila from Media Vandals. We are a local web and graphic design company here in Port Hope. Uh, and in partnership with the Port Hope Chamber, we are doing tips and tools for working remotely. Um, and this is both for obviously uh, internal and external, so employees, employers, and clients. <clears throat> um, so what we'll be covering today, uh, we'll be covering three things, mindset, tools to use, and then at the end we'll have a live Q&A. So let's uh, start it with mindset. <clears throat> so uh, mindset tips for building a new routine. Um, I'm sure most people here are working from their homes right now and uh, humans are creatures of habits. So um, having to work from home and change up your routine is probably quite difficult. Uh, things are feeling a little bit strange. So uh, just from my own experience, uh, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. What you want to do is keep everything as familiar as possible. So when I first started working from home, um, you know, it was, it was kind of nice not having to get up and go into work. And I would find myself sleeping in, grabbing the laptop and lying in bed and just watching TV and working. But I was extremely unproductive. Uh, it took me a while to figure this out, but you need to build a routine and stick to it. So try to keep things as familiar as possible. Um, if you normally get up in the morning, get dressed and go to work, then get up at that same time every day that you would normally um, get up, go through that normal routine of, you know, get up, take your shower, eat your breakfast, get dressed, and then go to work. Uh, obviously, you're not going to be leaving your house, um, but you should consider it as going to work. So uh, with that, if you can, bring your work tools home. And if you can't, uh, and you are working from your home computer, try to at least put the tools that you uh, typically use into uh, a Google Drive or a Dropbox. Um, it's a good storage place to put all the files you'll need to access, and it will give you um, the ability to access them from anywhere. Uh, another huge tool for building that new routine is to have a dedicated workspace in your house. Um, so you typically don't want to work in a common area like your living room or at the kitchen table because these are the areas that everyone else in your house uses frequently and you will be interrupted constantly and you, you just won't be uh, very productive, you won't get a lot done. Um, so my suggestion is to find a place in your house a low traffic place, set up a small work area, and just let everyone else in the house know that when you were in that spot, you were at work, and everything outside of work will need to stay outside of there. Um, and again, with that routine of a nine to five job or whatever you're used to, um, when you are outside of those business hours, just stay out of that space. It will keep your, your personal life and your work life separate and it will just uh, get you in a much better mindset. Um, <clears throat> maintaining work culture. Um, obviously, we are creatures of habit, but we're also uh, tribal creatures. So not having those regu regular connections, um, they start to wear on you after a while. So you want to stay connected with 
your employees, your employers, and your coworkers. Um, again, treating it like a regular job, uh, some, some way to keep that connection and keep those conversations going. Um, it's very important for your mindset. Um, with that, you want to keep regular uh, appointments. So if you would normally have a Tuesday stand-up meeting first thing in the morning with all of your team, uh, you, you want to still do that. We're just moving it to a virtual platform rather than in person. Um, another big thing is to send out video instead of text. And I will be showing some, some tools to do all these things. Uh, people are just getting way, way too much text right now. Lots of emails, lots of text messages, trying to stay connected. It's, it's hard to um, kind of cut through all that noise. So sending out a video instead of text, it's a little bit more refreshing. We're still getting that human connection, uh, that interactivity. And sometimes when you send out a text, it's, it's difficult to tell whether or not um, it's sarcastic or serious. So sending out that text, it stops all the confusion when you're, when you're telling your team something or uh, when you're trying to connect with somebody. Um, the last thing is schedule work breaks online with coworkers or just for yourself um, at the regular times that you normally would. Um, so if you are used to going into work at nine and around 1030, you take a coffee break with some coworkers, then uh, just shoot them a message ahead of time and say, hey, let's, let's still have our coffee break. We'll just take it to video chat. We'll get in our 10 minute break and chat by the water cooler and then get back to the work that we normally do. <clears throat> Obviously, everyone needs to try to stay positive. Uh, things are going to feel, aren't going to feel normal for a while, and, and that's perfectly okay. It's going to take everyone time to adjust. Um, it is a new way of doing business. Everyone is sort of stuck in their houses and with social distancing. So it's really important to try to stay positive and be patient with others because they are also going through this change. Things are weird. Um, you know, everyone is stressed out. Um, we wanna try and stay positive. Uh, and you also wanna connect with the people that you work with, get regular feedback and use this as an opportunity to grow uh, both your business and internally because, you know, things, they just aren't normal, right? <clears throat> so, Let's talk about some of the tools that you can use to accomplish all this. So the first thing is scheduling tools. Um, again, if you're used to scheduling uh, appointments in person, we don't wanna stop with setting the appointments. We just wanna take it virtually. So what we do at Media Vandals um, we use our Google Calendar to schedule everything, and the whole team has access to the calendar to see what's going on, um, to set appointments with clients. I use a tool called Calendly, and it comes in a free and a paid version. The free version is enough to get what you probably need. If this is not um, the way you're going to be doing business forever, you obviously don't want to spend money on upgrading the tools and Calendly will allow you to um, have the one calendar that people can access. Uh, and what you do is you, you connect it to your Google Calendar, you block off the times that you want to be made available and Calend Calendly will filter that in. Um, and then people just click on the link in your signature or if you send out your calendar and say, here's my calendar, schedule a time to chat. Uh, they click on the link, they see all the times you're available, they can choose one, uh, put in their information, and pre-schedule uh, automatically with you. And then, of course, on that day, Google is going to notify you, and you can either jump on the phone or jump on a video chat. <clears throat> so, virtual meetings. Um, this meeting we're having today is through zoom.us. Uh, they they have a free version and they have a top search result. Oh, sorry about that. 
My, I said Google and my phone looked that up. Google is always listening. <laughs> Um, so zoom.us has a free and a paid version. We are using the free version for this meeting and the free version will allow you to have up to a hundred participants and meetings that are 40 minutes long. If you are having a one-on-one -on -one meeting, it doesn't give you a time limit. So you can stay on zoom all day with someone and it won't kick you out. Um, it does give you a timer if you have more than one pe person on your meeting. So as you get close to that 40 minute mark, it will start counting down to let you know to wrap up your meeting. Um, and Zoom also lets you schedule meetings in advance, uh, allow attendees to call in. Um, that one they actually just changed, so strike that out. Um, it's a really weird time for them to change that, but they're trying to get people to, uh, to upgrade to use that call-in feature. Um, it allows you to record and screen share, such as I'm doing right now, and it is also available on PC, Mac, Android, and iPhone. So it doesn't matter where your clients are or your team, they'll be able to actually click the link and attend the meeting. <clears throat> um, next up, we have communication tools, and these are tools to help keep things uh, as close to real time as possible. Real time being um, if you are face to face with someone speaking. So internally, my team still uses Skype. And the reason we use it is because during business hours, we can keep it open. And uh, since we're all working remotely right now, we can quickly send messages back and forth or um, just shoot a message saying, hey, are you available to jump on a quick chat? And we'll turn on video and talk face to face. Um, there, outside of that, there's also Facebook Messenger and groups. Um, Facebook Messenger has now opened up that you don't need a Facebook account to use it. You can sign up just to have Messenger. And within Messenger, you can create groups or just chat one on one. Um, there are also, if you do have Facebook, you can create what's known as a Facebook group inside of Facebook that you can put privately and invite all the members of your team or clients or anything like that, and just uh, be able to share ideas and chat back and forth. Um, another good tool to use, although it can get a little bit confusing, is a tool called Slack, and what it is is a chat service that you can chat back and forth to people on your team. Um, that comes with messaging for teams to bring all communications together. Um, it also integrates with many tools like Google and Twitter and uh, Dropbox and Drive and everything. So you have the ability to upload files and uh, share information. Um, within Slack, you create things called channels and a channel would be similar to having a project. Um, they can be both public and private, and you would invite your team members into there. Uh, only the people invited into a private channel would see things. Um, public channels, your, your entire team can jump in and out and view everything. Um, it also allows you to share files, uh, direct message back and forth, or create group messages and uh, it comes in both mobile and desktop version. Uh, and then there is a tool called Loom, which is something we also use here in the office. Um, and Loom gives you the ability to uh, create a small screencast. Uh, and, and within that screencast, you can either have yourself down in the bottom right or left corner or have no image of you at all. Um, and it allows you to walk through what you're doing on the screen and create a, a tutorial video or anything else that you want to send out to somebody. Um, just, to, just to make it easier, again, uh, shooting out emails or text, it, gets, it can get a little confusing. So sometimes it's quicker to just jump on a quick loom, uh, shoot, a, shoot a video of either yourself or your screen or yourself and your screen. And then once you hit save, it gives you a link 
to send to people. And when they click that link, they can watch the video. Now, when they watch the video, it notifies you so you know it's been received. Um, and Loom has lifted their limits uh, on the free version right now to allow for unlimited videos. Um, usually it's a 25 video limit, and then you need to start deleting videos. <clears throat> um, so now let's talk about staying organized and collaborating with teams. Uh, and what I mean by teams is collaborating with both your clients and your employers or employees. And there's a few ways to do this uh, virtually, and these are all free options. So we will start with Trello. Uh, Trello is a project management software, and it uses what's called cards. So it looks uh, very similar to, say, a post-it note. Um, where you would write what the project is on the front and then when you click the card you can put all the project details inside. Uh, it allows you to collaborate with clients and with your team so you can invite people into those boards to, to view the cards, um, chat back and forth, upload files, check on project statuses, and uh, everything that you would normally do as an example of this, if you worked in a, a shop and you had um, work orders and the work order referenced a file in the filing cabinet, uh, there would be a virtual version of that. Um, so Asana is also a similar tool, but instead of using cards, they use lists. Um, and in the sidebar of Asana, you can create projects. And within those projects, you can invite clients and team members. And then you would use uh, what's known as tasks. So it's just a, a list of tasks. And when you click on one, you can put all your project details inside. Um, it's also good for creating to-do lists to keep yourself accountable during the day. You could go in and move things around to, uh, you know, this is what you want to do today. This is what you want to do later on this week. And then every day, just check in to your tasks. And as you complete them, you just click the check mark and they're marked complete. Um, the last collaboration uh, tools that I'm gonna mention is Google Docs. So Google offers a suite of tools very similar to Microsoft Office. Um, they are called Docs, Sheets, and Slides instead of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. This presentation that I'm giving was built in Google Slides. Uh, and these are free and people can collaborate in real time. So if you are working on, say, a Word doc and you've uploaded it to Google Doc, you can invite people in and you can actually see uh, their, their image up in the top right. You can see their cursor. It will be a different color per person. And as they're typing, you can see the typing happen. So that way, um, nobody's overwriting each other. You don't have to work on a file at home and then send it off to someone else to preview. They make changes and then send it back. Everyone can just work virtually online. And Sheets and Slides works the same way. So then the last, uh, the last tool I'm going to mention uh, is for keeping track of time. I'm not sure how many people keep track of their time. Um, with their business, but, but this is something that we use internally quite a bit. Uh, it's a tool called Toggle, and the free version actually has uh, quite, quite a number of features for teams to collaborate. Um, it has a little app that you download, and it can also integrate with things such as uh, Trello and Asana. And when you are starting to work, um, you would just click the Toggle button, Put in what you're working on and it starts keeping track of time. Um, as you're keeping track of time, once you finish, you hit the stop button and it uploads everything to the Toggle website where you can generate reports on everything that you've worked on and how much time you've spent. Now, the thing I really like about Toggle is in keeping with the don't forget to take breaks throughout the day, Toggle has something called a Pomodoro timer, which you can turn on in every 25 minutes, it will notify you to take a break. 
it will stop what you're doing and you get up, you take a break, you come back, you restart toggle. Um, so that's a feature that you can turn on and off. I know some people don't enjoy it. I do because it just reminds me to get away from my computer. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just a really, it's a really good tool for that. So I've talked for about 23 minutes. Um, I'm coming up to the Q&A portion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute everyone and allow you all to Okay. Yeah. okay. For total transactions. So each day that I get, I just kept all the other ones. So I just added them all today. And as time goes, so on Monday, I'll have another box in the box. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Chamber, it won't let me unmute you. Paul and Heather, you have an open mic. Uh, right. No questions? Not for me right now, no. Okay. But thank you. No problem. Um, so with that said, we, we do, uh, on this last slide, we do have a free ebook that talks about how to set up um, what's known as a sales funnel to keep people actually uh, connecting with your business. Um, so it's called Grow Your Business While You Sleep. If you visit mediavandals.com slash ebook, you can grab a copy there. It's free. It talks about how to set up a sales funnel and keep people engaged. Uh, and then the other thing that we have set up is a Facebook group to keep this conversation going. Um, it's just mediavandals.com slash FB group. If you visit there, you can join the group, invite other chamber members, in, invite employees, invite whoever you want. But let's just uh, keep this conversation going, uh, see how we can all help each other out and, uh, you know, keep, keep connecting with other people because this is a weird time and these connections, they're going to be important. So if there are any other questions or comments, uh, this is your last chance to, to throw something in the chat box. Otherwise, I will let everyone get back to their day. Thank you very much, Sheila. You're welcome. Okay.